Today, our second discussion will begin. Uh, of course, we'll continue with Yomi Fabi. He is a notable actor, movie producer, director, and human rights consultant. Yomi Fabi's acting career kickstarted in 2001 when he got introduced to working uh, by the famous actor Babatunde Omidino, also known as Babasue, in 2001, where he was featured in the movie titled Obalemo. And this was the start of his uh, journey in Hollywood. Over the years, Yomi Fabi has worked alongside other prominent Nollywood stars like Prince Jide Kosoko, Toyin Abraham, Desmond Elliott, Kemi Afolabi, and many other Nollywood celebrities. Now, he's a talented actor and an educated one at that. He acts in both Yoruba and English Nollywood movies. Yomi Fabi has won awards like the Best Producer by the City People Awards in 2016 and the African Films Award. Now, Yomi Fabi joins us live in the studio. Good morning, Yomi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you Good morning. very much for coming. Of course, driving, driving all the way from Abel Kota down here. Thank you very much. So, Thank you. Um, you have been very vocal on a lot of issues in, in the industry, mm -hmm. beyond the industry as well. We, the recent one is on the Bobat's um, death and the DNA saga. Um, why did you decide to come out and talk to the family of Bobat as regards to DNA? Um, first and foremost, um, I, I want to express my sympathy and condolences to the families of Mubad. His passing is very touching, very painful, because that's a promising guy who just started his life. Mm -hmm. um, and then when he died, the old stuff that came out attracted everybody to, to lend a voice. Lending a voice is not because of Mubad only. But because I don't want your son, the other person looking at me, I don't want their son or daughter to die. That kind of a mysterious death. Mm. And when we have a society and government, it includes the people. Mm. And when people that should be playing active role in the affairs of the nation are silent, then nothing will be done. The nation will be crawling. At this age of my life, I should be saying and be pointing to what I am contributing to my country. And that is why I said, okay, when I realized that the corona inquest is going the way it's going and then stories are being thrown on social media, nobody knew about social media. The first narratives that made us protested does not include anything that has to do with what happened in the last three days the guy died. Mm -hmm. We all we had a different narratives. And then when it's turning out to pan this way, because police investigated and they gave a press release. I was expecting every noble person to cooperate with police investigation. And then when it did come to corona inquest, nobody should obstruct police investigation or corona inquest investigation. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what we want to establish is the truth. Mm -hmm. And then everybody get corrected, whoever sh we all take measures that is appropriate. So I just felt like you coming up to say you're not going to do DNA or some people, you know, banter with your father-in-law. Mm -hmm. I'm like... What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know who is bringing this old DNA stuff, but the family has got right to ask. It's not because they are saying you killed. Because in, there are instances you could, a woman could mistakenly have an extramarital affair. Mistakenly? They, let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, because yes. Some of them might not deliberately. <laughs> some of them might have been pushed by pressure it from home be yes. or because they were abandoned. Women love attention. Or they don't like to be abandoned. Mm -hmm. If you abandon somebody you love for one, two, three weeks, be ready that anything can fill time. So if you mistakenly find yourself having an extramarital affair and it leads to pregnancy, and then you took it and put it on another man, it could be that the owner of the pregnancy is like, hey, hey, babe, I know that child is mine. Mm -hmm. He said, I can't give you. I'm married. My husband, you know, he thought that is his child. He said, oh, really? That man can kill that guy. Mm. It, things happen mm -hmm. I'm not the one investigating but if I realize that if you're dodging or you're trying to cover up something if there is no balance in the truth and we are not allowing for 100% truth to be established it's infringement of fundamental rights the father-in-law he is carrying the burden of pain he is still the only person that can say my son died sure. no other person can say it well, the mother can also say that. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm meaning, when I say father, I mean the mother. Mm -hmm. But not any other person that are saying he does not have right to ask for DNA. Mm -hmm. So every other person should respect the fact that he wants closure. 
And the government and the people of Nigeria must support it because we all came out. Except we are fooling ourselves. And I don't want to believe that Nigerians did the old work, the old protest for clout. We are gone, we are gone beyond that stage. We mean it. The young people mean it because it's not just about Mobad. It's about the health of this state and country. So I just have to lend my voice and say, allow it. It's not about you. You might not even be the culprit. True. But somebody might have clinged on you to do something bad. Let the police do their work. But what do you think would happen if she eventually says an outright no to the DNA test? Because this matter has been dragging from last year with one controversy and one issue or the other. But what do you think would happen if she says, no, 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 I'm not going to do that? No, she can say no to probably if somebody is asking informally. Like the way the... Probably, I don't know whether the father-in-law have asked her privately. You know what, well, let's get his DNA done. Let's know even if it's my son's child. Then we can help the police in the investigation. Say, no, 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 I don't want to do it. Mm. No problem. But if the father-in-law or any legally interested person feels that, I think we should look into that direction of a DNA, then that would give us another opportunity to, uh, to drag somebody into the case and know who killed this man. Then... If they approach the court, the court will look at the pros and cons and then give verdict. And if the court gives verdict, <laughs> it's binding on anybody. Mm -hmm. Truly. Well, what do you think is the pathway to peace for this family? I mean, what if the DNA test is done and we eventually see that, oh, okay, there's nothing suspicious there. But then even before this DNA drama started, there were still, there were still some issues the father and then the mother and then Wumina. So what do you think is the pathway for peace for this family so that they can grieve in peace and eventually move on? I think the pathway for peace is for all the parties involved to allow for discreet investigation. Everybody is a suspect except the victim who died. So there is no way you want to achieve peace and say, okay, don't even think it is me. It might be directly you, it might be indirectly you. It could be negligence. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. But if you expect that murder should be treated with kids' glove in a country like Nigeria, then you're joking. That means we don't, we don't want to go forward. Mm -hmm. So the pathway to peace is to respect the rights of other people. Mm -hmm. And if your hands are clean, there are some certain things they will ask you. It might look insultive, but because your hand is clean, you wait. Allow the process to flow, and then look into your accuser and say, now, what do you have to say? If a person is noble enough, you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you went through that, I made you went through that, but I still want to know what killed my son. And then you can't blame the person. If he says, now I'm done with your own side, I want to look into another direction. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's natural. Okay, so let's move into another direction now in the industry. Um, despite the controversy that surrounded the beast of um, uh, Two Worlds, the movie, it still came out fine. The first week it grossed so well, about 60-something million, and recently... 102, um, 101.2 million after five days. Mm -hmm. we, what does this say about the industry, especially at the fact that we are seeing that women are blazing the trail in the sector? Yeah, yeah, there, there is this popular saying, <laughs> um, every controversy is a plus. <laughs> you understand? A lot of people do not know. And people tend to mistake controversy for scandal. Mm. Somebody like me, I have never been involved in any scandal in my life. So you've been controversial? Of course, I'm an activist, and <laughs> I, will, I will antagonize somebody. I will put my life on the line for truth to be established. The benefactor of lies will come for me. So I have already zeroed my mind that things like that will come because I just try to live my life to the best of my ability. Mm. Because I wasn't raised to be overzealous. I am not, I'm, not, um, I'm not looking for what is not mine. I don't drag what is not mine. Mm. I don't take what does not belong to me. I don't... I don't, take, I don't steal, I don't pick money on the floor. This is what, how I've been raised. That's my background. So naturally, and I respect the rights of everybody. Sure. I respect the rights of women. I respect the rights of children. So I have been raised with this. So they keep looking for what to drag me into controversy. And I always like, hey, you cannot keep me. The reason why you see all this controversy is because I want to put it to them that you cannot shut me down. Mm. You can only say you don't like my opinion. But don't tell me to keep shut. Not on your life. I only, I'm only going to keep saying what I want to say. That's it. Okay, so regarding the movie, Beast of Two Worlds, despite the controversy, it has, it has, we have seen that a lot of indigenous movies since last year up till now have been grossing so well in the industry. What does this say about the sector, especially at the fact that 
many of them that have many of the movies that have grossed so well have been produced or directed by women. And you're about women for that. For that uh, yeah, that, that is to tell you that we are evolving. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the better the public-private sector comes in, mm -hmm. the better it is for the country. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've been agitating for a long time. If you're elected into public office, one of the things and the core values is to look into what does the majority of the people want? What interests them? What makes them happy and lively? Movie sector, entertainment industry, is one of the core pillars of a Nigerian society. So it is very important that when they are doing the budget, when they are making policies, they do policies that would encourage homegrown talent mm. to do more and to get better for themselves. So when they create the enabling environment, in the cinemas now, foreign movies are giving probably, they should give them like 10%. Okay. In the local movies, in the cinemas, they should give them like 90%. Then people will invest into that industry because they know there will be ROI. That is return of investment. Mm. So because that is, is getting guaranteed, distribution guarantee, then people will start investing and then more stories will be told that will mirror the society the way we should mirror it and then we get better. Do we have enough cinemas? Like I said, the more there is public-private partnership whereby government creates an enabling environment for investors to, to build cinemas, to build malls where people can, you know, a serene, secure environment where... People can see as a leisure, tourism, mm -hmm. and fun. Then the society will try. People will not even think about crime. They just want to go out after my walk. I want to go and relax myself because at the end of the day, you walk, you relax, the next thing is death. Nothing after. So why do you want to steal me of my fun? I just walk, 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 and then die. I will come, if I meet you in heaven, if I know you are responsible for that, I'm at no problem. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I know about Yomi, he always likes to have fun. Yes. That's why I follow him on Instagram. So I see a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, anyways, uh, we before we started the segment, we were talking about uh, Mommy of Lagos, Bob Risky, and okay. all. And I want to ask, yes, I believe that the that law should um, take toll, like let justice be served. Um, what is your, your take on the matter, on the whole Bob Risky issue? And we've got, remember, remember that um, sometime last week he was awarded Best Dressed Female at this the same, same Ajanaku uh, film premiere. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hide behind a finger and pretend as if we all don't know what they're trying to do. I'm going to be speaking more as a human rights ambassador and consultant here. For whatever intent or purpose, he's been charged for messing up with the Naira notes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to call it, it's a criminal offense yes, under the law. Truly. Definitely. But, and they are trying to make a point. I will only appeal for clemency. Yes. That whatever the case may be, this, it's got people is feeding. It's got people on his payroll. What we want is correction. A lot of people should just tap into, okay, if you want to even spray, spray with dignity. People drop money in offering. They drop it. They create a box. So we should understand that which change is the only thing that is constant. The message is because it's a socialite, it's popular. And then they feel like, okay, let's use him to correct this narrative. We should endure it. But they should also understand that going too hard on him would not send the right message. You've passed your message, respect the Naira, but I expect clemency because it's already pleaded guilty. So when you want to do your Naira spraying, because it's already in our culture. It's part of us. So it's not something they will do and remove immediately. Mm -hmm. It's going to be total catastrophic. Okay, create a box. Respect the Naira. You can never see them do that with pounds. They respect that pounds because one fear, one lazy. So we should just... Pound to a Naira is... Even before it was that um, <laughs> um, uh, bogus, they still respect. So drop it in a box. Put dignity in so that they will say, okay, these people respect the Naira. Mm. You understand? It's just they're trying to, I know what they're trying to do. But if people think it's about being a cross-dresser or stuff, as far as I know as a human rights activist, mm -hmm. it's right, he has got right to choose. It's not yet in our law whether you don't have right to choose mm -hmm. and stuff like that. There was a time in this country that we're killing twins. If you give birth to twins as you are, yes. they'll kill them immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask me why. They thought it was a taboo. So when people think things are not right at a particular time, it's because they have not allowed for perspectives. Mm. So at the end of the day, God is seeing them that they are transgender, that they are behaving like a man, a woman. He hasn't killed them. Do you understand? 
I'm not going to be delving into that, but as an activist, as a human rights activist, I'm not going to say he doesn't have, but that is not why he's been tried. So I don't want to delve into that. It's his fundamental right. If they think he has com I am committed any offense in that one, they should bring it out. But I don't think anybody has, has any evidence against him in terms of committing crime in that area. Mm -hmm. But in this narrow display, they should just right. take it easy. All right, so I know that there are some personal things you are doing, but tell us about that. First of all, you're opening your home? Yeah. God gifted me a, a house. Mm -hmm. He saw my efforts and my struggle. So when I went on my world tour mm -hmm. with my movie, Percent Ibiomo, you know, it's still the same thing. People are doing movies, they throw it out in cinemas, and I'm like, okay, I have, well, I still have his own video. But there is distribution guarantee. Mm -hmm. I created a new avenue to distribute my movie, and I just need to pay respect to my fans. You know, I, a lot of people think when you're a star, the next thing you do is start snubbing your DM. Mm -hmm. Start making like, I am this before the fans. What I do is I ensure that I conserve my fan base. When they talk to me, hardly will a fan write me, and it takes 24 hours before I reply. Okay. I am not too busy for my fans. So, and at the end of the day, it worked well for me. When I decided to travel to Canada, America, and, and UK okay. on, with my movie, how, all I did was contacting these fans that have, we've established relationship off social media. Mm. They are silent supporters. And they're like, okay, bring your movie. And I, I took the movie into their homes. So they were seeing me on the screen and me in their living room. Wow. It's a new invention. And then I grossed millions, mm. hundred and something millions. And then God says, hey, young man, you know, they thought you've not made it. So go and show them that I'm with you. Build a house and do something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be the talk of the town. Yeah. You wait and see. Me, let, let me don't say the date. <laughs> May 1st, now. May 1st. It's my birthday. It's, it's going to be I didn't want to bring The first time I'm going to be doing something, doing something extra with my birthday. Truly. Truly. Uh, but thank you so much, Jeremy, for coming. Of course, it's, it's worthy of note that he came all the way from Abekuta. I, I, I told him to, to go via Zoom. He said no, that he was come and he's here. I have thank to respect. So I have to respect thank TVC. <laughs> thank you very much for coming and for talking to us. We'll, we'll have you even more beyond the Thank you so it's much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And of course, uh, that's uh, our segment this morning. Uh, we'll hand over to the sports team. And Mike Mesikeno is on standby. Stay tuned. <laughs>